So I have a long history of self-portraits, dating back to when I was 17, the, my first oil painting was a self-portrait. And last year, um, my self-portrait after George Lambert won the Archibald Prize, and this was in the months after that. So a friend had given me a bunch of gladioli, knowing that George Lambert had done a self-portrait called Self-Portrait with Gladioli, so it's the same title as my work. And I decided to incorporate the flowers into the into this painting um, but at the time I was working with like a color scheme I was doing working on a series of works that had oranges and reds and rust colors and um, this dress is actually uh, one that is a family heirloom that my grandmother made in the 70s so she was a seamstress um, and I'm the only one that, that the clothes fit now so I put it on and um, yeah, I've been sort of working with different ways of manipulating paint. So this is has got a texture that is created with pumice powder and I've used a palette knife to build it up. One of the key things is that you are always present in the studio when you're, when you're painting and you're not always going to have a subject that is available for the hours that you need to put in to work from life. So um, it allows me this opportunity to work from life from the mirror um, to be really engaged in the process of painting, to have this really intense um, engagement without needing to be accommodating to somebody else. Like, I can work a lot harder that way as a painter um, without giving myself tea breaks every 20 minutes. And I guess, you know, as an introvert, and I think a lot of... It's funny because you're a portrait painter, you think, you know, and you work with people, but... I actually find it quite tiring having someone in the studio and needing to talk and, and maintain a connection and being conscious of you know another person's presence. So I feel like it's afforded me a space to work in a way that is solitary, that um, is very sort of self-reflective and autobiographical. But at the same time, I've always probably been drawn to the performative side, um, but as well as being, you know, the art director, the costume designer, the, make the makeup artist, you know, having all those roles as well as being in the work. Um, it's sort of, in a way it's performative, but at the same time you're alone in the space. You're not, you can at times switch off from the fact you're going to have an audience. But I don't know if you can ever really drop that awareness. And I think... Um, you know, in the process of painting, you're going to have your good days and bad days. And I feel like that looking in the mirror and that process of being present with yourself, no matter what you're going through and how your moods and energy shifts, is, um, is kind of a way to mark time in your life and, you know, reflect on, you know, I look back over the years at the works I've done and it really kind of brings back where I was at and the kind of journey as an individual that I've I've gone on but I feel like um, it's just using uh, a, a subject and a genre in to enable me to make a new picture and to find ways to make new, uh, to break new ground so I guess in that way of having that kind of constant subject um, a lot of the other things can be variable and you can push them as well as I'm not going to offend anyone else if they don't like it it's just me I don't fully remember there was probably another painting under it that started as something completely different and I think often my work will sit around in the studio and it won't be working for a while and I'll be sort of you know unhappy with it and then just have things on rotation um, it, it is layered it's probably it's not one of my most layered but it, it does have um, maybe two, maybe three or four layers to it and uh, as I said, like I work with, I've been working with a palette knife to apply the paint. So there isn't a lot of brush work on this, and you can see like all those little flicks in through the face. Um, yeah, it's all done with a knife. D the style of the dress is from is from the, you know a 70s era, and I think it kind of taps into that. You know, the style of painting sort of resonates with the 70s. But you know, I was speaking to another artist tonight, and he said. You know, it still looks has a 30s, 40s reference, so it kind of doesn't have a, spe a very specific time period, but it resonates across maybe. But the 70s also was influenced by the 20s and deco, so I think there's a few sort of time frames that it kind of touches. No, I feel like as a painter, it's just where I, what I'm, the techniques that I've, that evolve. You know, I started as a photorealist. I was doing that for a lot of years and very fine layers and, and 
you know, and now I'm working with texture a lot more and layers and um, I think I just really have so many influences and it's like you just sometimes don't know which influences and which artists are going to come through in your work and um, maybe there is an element of abstraction that, you know, working with a palette knife, there are little areas in within the painting that are really abstract um, and... Yeah, it's quite a liberating technique. You know, as a painter, there's so many parts to your practice, and I feel like prizes is great PR. It's um, it, it kind of puts your work in an, in another context amongst painters who are also working in portraiture. Um, it is, uh, you know, it's and it's a it's a wonderful supportive kind of atmosphere. It's also. Um, the Moran Prize is incredibly supportive of, I mean, even of the finalists and acknowledge in, in a way, you know, helping us with our costs of even just getting the work here. So I think that's fantastic. But um, I think the most beautiful thing is just the atmosphere is so relaxed and artists are just coming together from all over Australia and connecting. And I think that's really special about coming up for these openings.